And I really hope that I can, you know, that we, all of us, can collectively convince, not just me and not just the people in my company, but the fans, can kind of spread the virus and get more people uh, to embrace watching wrestling again every week. You guys enjoy the show? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. It was great to see you guys again. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, any questions? I'll be. I can take everybody's questions. I have no rush to get out of here. But what do you guys uh, want to talk about? I want to ask you a weird question about. I mean, you guys had this great show. It was a hit show, but it's the first time there's been a big wrestling show in Chicago since All In, where there hasn't been CM Punk chance, even though he was part of the weekend. Was that a concern going in that the fans might want him on the show? Or, and how do you feel kind of coming out of it that that didn't even come up? Uh, I think it's great. I think we have really respectful fans, and I think everybody made it really clear that he wasn't going to be here, and so I don't think there was any expectation for it, and I think everybody got what they wanted to see, so uh, I, I'm really happy with the show, and so I'm glad out there that wasn't what anyone's thinking about, so hopefully back here there's more about what this is the show we actually did. Uh, thanks. One of the big surprises of the night felt like from the crowd reaction was Kenny losing to Pat clean. You said wins and losses matter, so what does that mean for Kenny Omega? Well, I think Kenny's won, you know, he's had it up and down, right? I think he, uh, you know, he had the, didn't get the win against Chris in the first match, which set up the title eliminator, but then uh, had a win at Fighter and the six man, and then uh, had, had beaten Shima at Fight for the Fallen. So now uh, kind of uh, evens it up a little bit, but it really says that Pac establishes him as a, as a top player for us. And I think uh, Pac's going to be a really important uh, person in AEW, and, uh, and that is a great start to his run here. And he's 1 0, and it's a big one. And so it puts him right in the mix. So that's really big. So, hey, Tony, so, I, so I, I take that as he's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, I, I do expect uh, Pac's gonna, uh, Pac's gonna keep uh, wrestling here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Right now, just some more light into that. You said wins and losses matter. You said it a couple times. What does that mean moving forward? Is there a way to keep track of that? You know, within the company. Yeah. Well, if uh, so, I know you, you guys were all out in the crowd. So we actually did have uh, on several of the matches uh, records. And they were specific records, and there's actually we listed two records. So there was a record specific to the type of match it was. So like for singles, there was a singles record, and there was like a tag record for like tag team matches. And then for the trios match that we opened the show with, there was a trios record because SEU were one and zero in trios because they. So we have singles records, tag records, and trios records. Then we have like overall records when applicable, uh, like you know for different different people. Like for like for example, like uh, Cody was like it said he was. Uh, one zero oh, and one in singles because he had like you know the win against Dustin and and then the draw against Darby right and then uh, but he also had had the tag loss so that's why his overall record was one one and one but his singles was one zero oh, and one so yeah we've started to establish it more like a sport I think that make, does that make sense yeah great. Tony who stood out to you talent wise like uh, some of the younger talent on the card that maybe people weren't too aware of but who stood out to you a little bit more like just on this show in particular anyone well, that, I, I thought like uh, Private Party did a great job in the opener and then like it's uh, like Jack's been around it forever Jack Evans has been around forever but like I think this is going to be the best showcase for Jack Evans and Angelico and I thought they did a great job in their match in the women's uh, battle royal I was really proud of the women in the casino battle royal and I thought so many people did a great job there and I was really proud of that uh, across the show, I mean, there were like uh, really top performances across the board. I mean, Hangman is a is a young man and came in in the main event, and I thought that was a really really tremendous main event we had. So I was also really proud of that, considering like he's going to have a, a really long career ahead of him too. So uh, it was a it was a great performance from him, even though he is not the first. AEW World Champion. We saw Arn Anderson tonight. Any chance to see more of him in AEW? I never say never. Uh, we, we, he was he was he did a great job, and that was a huge huge pop for that. And I was I was really excited about that, and I'm not uh, surprised that it got a great reaction. And um, yeah, I'd love to see more of him. I'd, that'd be great. Right, does, does, does Tully stay with the Spears long term? I think we expect. I expect he will. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, the ex expectation is those guys are going to be together. It seems like it. Yeah, I think so. Right now, update just... on the status of Kylie Ray. She's been a little bit absent. Uh, she's no longer with us. Uh, we had so many things going into so many announcements going into that role, but uh, she asked for a release and we granted it. So uh, it, was, it was she. She called me and asked if uh, she could be released from her contract. And it was pretty simple. I said yeah, and I asked her if everything was okay, and she said yeah. She you know. She just didn't want to be with the company anymore and we talked about it and it was very simple and so yeah she's she's uh, not on our roster Seemed amicable super amicable I, I, she's a very nice person now it's just called AEW on TNT right now are you planning on giving this show a name or? yeah we had so I wanted to go all out on all out and focus on that before we start focus. I mean this everyone's aware we have a show launching on TNT and I think it was a big part of the build-up this summer that people knew there's a show on TNT coming 
And that's why people want to get invested now because this is going to become a huge part of people's lives watching wrestling on TNT uh, for you know a couple hours every Wednesday night. And so that's why I think like a lot of people have, have invested themselves in the AEW the, as, a, as a company, AEW the wrestlers and and storylines. And that's um, you know so yeah, absolutely. Like I do think uh, you know yeah, it's it's a huge part of it. Like uh, and. Do you have anything else pertaining to that? I was just wondering if you could maybe, like, I didn't know if you were going to tell us today, but it's like... No, 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 I'm not, like, no, 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 no. I, I'm not going to... Not, not, not tonight, but we, well, there is going to be a name for the show. It's not going to be All Elite Wrestling, because I think it would be, like, uh, confusing between the company and the name of the show. So we won't call it... The name of the show will, will not be All Elite Wrestling. Okay. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. No, 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 no sure, it's great. Yeah, it's perfectly good question. Hey, AJ. Um, whenever Pac didn't fight Kenny in the Battle Royal, and he was still at zero wins, zero losses. Someone said that he was an undefeated beast. Do you, can you say that's true if they have not done a match? They're untested, they're unbeaten. Un, yeah, I mean, he's, he, had, he hadn't been beaten here. He, uh, so yeah, I guess, yeah, you can. Technically, yeah. But uh, we, we put, I put the graphic up. I made the call to put that up just because I thought it would say, like, you know, this is just established. Like, this is a fresh start for him, and we'll see where he comes in. And you know, it was obviously a really huge way to debut, so I thought uh, I would emphasize it, if that makes sense. Cool. Tony, you've mentioned in the past how the World Championship's design was inspired by previous world ch titles. Uh, we saw the Women's Championship. North American. Debut. Right, right. <laughs> we saw the Women's title get debuted tonight. Was that design inspired by any previous championship? I, uh, it was, uh, honestly, I didn't spend, I had, uh, the input on that, I think the design with the rose gold, and the, it was uh, trying to do something different than what anybody's done. That was probably not as much uh, inspired by, or, or you know, the, the, I think the idea with our other championship is like, mass and this one was like trying to do something that nobody had really done and the beautiful rose gold pattern it was not my idea but uh it was a jeep who came off great and i thought it looks really good tony did you have any idea that cody was gonna bring you out at the end of the show and what did it mean to yeah, speak to the yeah sold out? of course i knew what did it mean to speak? <laughs> i don't know what's gonna I have a pretty good idea what's gonna happen what did it mean to <laughs> <laughs> what did it mean to speak to the sold out crowd here tonight uh i was looking forward to it it's something i really wanted to do because i'm from illinois and uh, i went i grew up here in illinois and i was lived here uh, all my life until my family bought the Jags and I had never spent more than a couple weeks at a time out of Illinois in my entire life until I was probably about 28 years old and uh, so to be back here like you know I've been to a lot of wrestling shows in Illinois and uh, my family like I said we spend the holidays here and uh, you know it means a lot to me to be able to be back here and I just wanted to let people know it's a tradition I want to keep the tradition of all out uh, you know here in the Chicago area and also the tradition of coming back here to the Sears Center I think uh, I really believe there's going to be a lot of people that want to come see a wrestling show uh, in the suburbs here on Thanksgiving Eve. There's a lot of people in the suburbs on the night before Thanksgiving, so November 27th, you know. I just want to let people know, and I also wanted to thank people. I didn't come out to get thanked. I'm not, I feel like, yeah, I'm not surprised. I, but I also did wanted to tell people, like, I don't feel like I deserve any thanks or anything because I'm the happiest person here, and I feel like, I, you know, I'm just happy that everybody else is happy, and it was really great to see such, a, like, a really Jack crowd, and I was here a year ago, and, and the crowd was really pumped, and it was, you know, a lot of the same faces, so it was cool. Tony, so as, as well as all the up-and-comers that we've had in the AEW, there's been a great use of legends tonight. We saw that in the Casino Battle Royale, the Cody and Sean Spears match. Is that something you guys would like to do in the TV shows, kind of bring legends in and have them work with younger people? Because we don't see that as much yeah. in, a, in a good way. I mean, we have, I think we have a great crop of stars, like, in the ring now, and, like, the Bell to Bell product's the most important thing here. Like, we want to emphasize the wrestling matches, and, like, we try to have a lot of great wrestling matches, and that's why, you know, we had a couple great wrestling matches in the buy-in with the Casino Battle Royale and the tag team match, and then we had eight great wrestling matches on the pay-per-view, and I think, you know, similar to Double or Nothing, I think there was one last match, we had the title presentation, and to your point, Bret Hart was involved in that. And so, yeah, we have tried to incorporate legends, really to emphasize the importance of the things we're doing when the situation's right in the major moments, but uh, it's when the time is right, you know? And I think the emphasis has to be on, like, the wrestling product that we're trying to deliver, like, right now, and that's why I think, like, as, you know, your opening question, I think we have a really respectful crowd that really respects that we want to give them great wrestling every time out, every time we do a show, we put a lot of thought into it, and we do as a group sitting together, put a lot of thought into the wrestling we're going to give you every week. So only your four shows in now, but the real game is going to start in uh, October, now going head-to-head -head with NXT, of course, so how do you, like, look back at the first couple of months running the company, any regrets, or how confident are you now with... Um, going weekly and going again. I feel really good. I, I, I feel really, really good. I feel very good. And, you know, going in about a year ago at this time, I would say that we've, like, it's kind of checked a lot of boxes. I'm so far very happy with how we've done to get through the summer. I, about a year ago at this time, 
I expected there would be a company like AEW and I expected we would have done show double or nothing and we would have done all out and I would have expected fight for the fall and fighter fest is something that came to us later but I expected a summer pretty similar to what we've done um, I'm really pleased we slightly I had very high expectations for double or nothing but honestly we did a little even better than I expected and it was just such a great success both commercially and critically uh, and I expect uh, our TV show will be a great success also I'm mindful of the fact that uh, from a creative standpoint, from a writing standpoint, it is like a more difficult thing to do to write a television show with commercial breaks and uh, I spent a lot of time preparing for that and I'm really well prepared to do that and uh, I think we've, you know, we've written a lot of great shows and we're going to have a lot more great shows every week so I'm, I'm excited about it. It's something, if you'd asked me a year ago at the same time here in Schaumburg, I would have said like, I was excited about it then so you can imagine how excited I am now. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be October 1 or October 2, but pretty much a year ago I expected this was all going to be happening like it's happening. It's just a little better than I expected. And are you planning being at every TV because you are also running a football club yeah. in another company? Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, and I'm back and forth. And uh, so I am planning to be there and I'm planning to do what I've been doing in timing shows and uh, setting the gorilla. So yeah, I, I will expect to be going back and forth. I, I want to show a follow up fast. You said October 1 or 2. Were you contemplating Tuesday night instead of Wednesday night? And was there something? Yeah, it was. What original. was the decision? What was the process in that decision? Uh, the process in that decision was those were really good nights for the wrestling fan that would be uh, that would not be competing with the most popular show on television, which is the National Football League. The vast majority of the top 100 shows, like over 90 out of the top 100 shows are NFL games in this country, in America. Uh, like I think it's about 47 of the top 50 most watched shows and almost all of the top 20, maybe 24 of the top 25. Uh, so maybe if not 20, 20 to 20. 20 to 23, 24 of the top 25. So uh, I don't want to go against the NFL on Monday night or Thursday night or Sunday night because I am a part of the NFL. But the first would have been a Tuesday night. Were you not considering Tuesday instead of Wednesday night? Yeah, I, that, but then we ended up partnering with TNT and uh, Tuesday was the, the, the NBA's on Tuesday. That was a pre-existing yeah, commitment. Okay. And so it wasn't uh, for our TV. I, I didn't know a year ago who my TV partner was going to be in. So uh, I knew that wherever we were, I'd really like to do a weekly television show and give wrestling fans uh, that in their week again where you get two hours of live high quality wrestling really higher production values than have ever been available but the state of the art and has it's been a long time since the state of the art production values top wrestlers a top promotion and I was here a year ago and it was a great show but like you know you can have a great game but it's another thing to have a great league like the NFL again like the Super Bowl were part of the greatest brand the greatest game in the world but uh, without all the, the league and the season and the playoffs behind it you know makes it that much more important. So that's that's what my thinking on it, on where we're at. Tony, okay. the uh, wins and losses, when we talk about that, is there going to be something that ends like a season finale with these guys with the best record? Or is this going to be something that's cumulative? I think we're going to look at like record year to year, like kind of throughout a calendar year. But I also think like you're going to keep an overall record and it's always going to live the same as with any other sport. Like your record is, but you, you know, certainly people go on runs, you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao lost some fights early in his career and then went on a run and then he lost some fights and then he has gone on another run. So you never know. Um, so would it be like a championship like, opportunity for the guy with the best record at the end of the year? Would it be a playoffs? Have you thought about that? Yeah, well, uh, we're gonna, we have some exciting announcements. I think the big focus going into TV right now, obviously with Crown, I'm really excited that Chris Jericho you know, is now, we've established that between Chris and Hangman, who's going to be the champion for us, and now going into TV, I think a big focus for us is going to be A, you know, on TV one, the, we've got a huge women's title match now. Uh, Nyla Rose, I thought, like, Nyla Rose is already a big star. I think Nyla Rose has already proven Nyla Rose is a big star, but, like, put a lot of thought into that. And Nyla, Nyla Rose, if, if, if you didn't consider Nyla Rose a star before, I think you should now. And uh, Nyla Rose versus Rio. Rio and Sheeta was awesome. And I've talked a lot to you guys, like, individually and collectively about the fact that I believe in Joshi, and I think that uh, with the platform we have now, we can introduce a lot of fans, both here in America and worldwide, to some of the great Japanese women's wrestlers. And it's a style that like people really love and want to embrace, similar to almost 25 years ago, 20, you know, 24 years ago, when Nitro launched and uh, Lucha Libre uh, became more prevalent on American television. And I think similarly, the Joshi wrestlers have been great. And uh, you know, Shio and Ri Shio, Shida and Rio, I give them a ton of credit. Yuka Sakazaki's coming and done some great things also. Uh, so we have some really exciting things but there, but Nyla Rose and Riho, I think for the title, is a huge focus for us on the first show, in addition to the matches we've announced, with Cody versus Sammy and uh, the Sixer, uh, with you know Chris and the Mystery Partners against uh, uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny. And so uh, TV2, we start the playoffs for, uh, for the tag team. So when you talk about playoffs, yeah, the tag team playoffs start week two, and they're gonna go out, and we've announced the semifinals will be in Pittsburgh, and the finals will be in Charleston, West Virginia, week four, week five. So across week two, three, four, five, you're going to see some great tag matches, starting with Young Bucks against Private Party. And, you know, Young Bucks had a tough night tonight, but I thought it was a great showing. And Private Party, I thought, you know, again, another great night for them. So, with yeah. TV comes advertising. 
have you had good luck finding the advertisers? Yeah, I, think, I mean, we got a chant for Cracker Barrel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. We got a chant for the advertiser, and uh, and we actually had a great. I'll, I'll I'll put some photos on social media later. But we had a great uh, party on, uh, a couple days ago for a lot of the uh, sponsors, potential sponsors, and our partners at Warner Media, and a lot of the advertising partners that are out there. And yeah, we're gonna really pound the pavement. That's we do the same thing in football, both here and in England. And, uh, I really believe in it, giving the sponsor everything for their dollar. I thought Cracker Barrel was a great relationship because we got a lot out of it too. You know, both uh, they, they took great care of us. They, you know, we were, we were compensated but we were, uh, financially, but they also compensated us with the best catering you'll ever get for a pay-per-view again. Cracker Barrel food is great. So. You, you were talking about the women's division. Uh, you actually brought some very good, uh, talented women. Uh, here tonight, Mercedes Martinez, Priscilla Kelly, Shaza McKenzie, uh, Nicole Savoy, just to name a few. Yeah, yeah. A any of them you'd like to sign full time with AEW? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a, again, we have a lot of people on the roster right now, and right now, uh, one of the challenges we're all going to face, and again, it's something I'm going to have to uh, come to grips with, is we're coming in with content. Is look, I don't want to oversaturate the market with content, but the fact is, on a two-hour show, we're already on tonight, you know, on a pay-per-view, a four-hour pay-per-view with a one-hour pre-show. You still don't see. There's still some very important people on the roster who still are not wrestling on the show necessarily every week. And so with a two-hour TV show, you're not going to see everybody every week necessarily. So uh, I do want to make sure everyone's getting time right now, you know, and there are people I really care. You know, this was the first time Penelope Ford's wrestled, for example, and I wanted to get Penelope Ford in sooner, but we have a lot of people we're trying to get to, and she did a great job. But even though she wasn't in the match as long as, you know, she would have liked to be, but, but she did well when she was in there and did some great stuff. So uh, there's the, everyone you named is great. Uh, I really like every single uh, woman you named there, and I think uh, all of them could potentially be in line to come back here. Tony, you mentioned. Uh, so let me get AJ real quick because uh, I always like to get AJ early because you guys can stay late. I don't want to keep him up all night. I'll stay for you guys all night. Um, you were talking about only Wednesday and Tuesday. What about Saturday? Is the reason why you're not doing? All we do our Saturday? pay per views on Saturday, so we do shows on Saturday. So you've been to, I mean, you've been to a few of them now. So this is one of our pay per view nights. So I can't do the TV the night of the pay per view because then. It would be, you know, what do you do the night of the TV? You know, so I, I like to, and also it's a, it's a really good to have a weeknight. Uh, I believe in a weeknight primetime show. People come home like I used to do. People come home from school, come home from work at night, and uh, it's like an important part of your week. It really does become, and, and my whole life it's been. But Saturday, we're gonna do shows on Saturday too. So it's, so hopefully I'll see you on a lot more Saturdays over the years. So I mean, I mean like maybe we don't do the TVs on the week of the shows. Maybe. You could do it. I mean, it's a, you know, people have, you know, here's the thing. So when people have traditionally had, like, so like, there have been, like, paper, people have done pay-per-views on Sundays, and they've had Sunday shows, and, like, that particular show, it's usually not their A show. It's usually their B show, and usually they'd either turn it into a countdown show, which you could turn your show into a countdown show, but we'd have to start it really early. It's just... For, I, I can explain it to you later, but but there's probably a lot of reasons why. Like I, Wednesday was a really good night for us to land, so I was, I, I, it was it was it was something I always would would have liked to have had. So it's good. And doing the pay per views on Saturday is what I wanted to do too. So I'm, it's all working out good. We've seen referees in AEW have more tendencies and individual characteristics than other companies. Is that a concentrated effort or just kind no, of? No, I mean they have that? personalities, and I let yeah. them do. The, I mean we talk about stuff, and people, you know, and I, I think. Uh, Everyone gets to showcase with it, you know, their personalities, and we have a lot of uh, belief in like our all the people here, are not and not just the wrestlers, and everyone backstage, and in the referees too, and they do a great job. Uh, so I thought our referees did an awesome job. I was really proud of, of the way they did, and um, I think, uh, yeah, it's it, why you know why wouldn't you, you want everybody on your show to have a great personality? I'm sure you see that a lot in your other lines of work too, referees that can influence the outcome of a game. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, you know, and there's a little more entertainment here to the other, uh, business, you know, football in England, both in the NFL. So uh, the, the referee can maybe have a little more flair and personality here than you'd want in, in another sport. But yeah, I, I think it's great. And I'm really glad our referees did such a good job. And it was, I thought it was a really fun show. And, uh, you know, I, I was really glad we, Aubrey delivered, uh, not just referee to great match, but also it was a great uh, moment. Her uh, a presentation of the championship, I thought, added a lot of prestige to what was already a very prestigious moment. You've famously been a big fan, obviously, of wrestling all your life. Um, did you get a chance today to take a step back as a fan and mark out, so to speak, right now? No, I can't really do that. I mean, it's a world I'm at work, and same as, like, I love been growing up going to football my whole life, too, in Illinois. I've been going to the University of Illinois games as long as I can remember, both football and basketball. And I love them, and now I work in football every weekend in front of, you know, huge stadium crowds, and uh, I can't really... Uh, you know, every once in a while you soak it up, and I really soaked it up. I did a, really appreciate once we were off the air, being in the ring, it was really nice, and seeing my mom, because it's only the second show my mom's ever uh, 
been to, the first show she'd ever been to was Fight for the Fall, and I've been, you know, a wrestling fan for well over 29 years, close to 30 years, and uh, I've never gotten to her show, and now I've gotten her to two, and she's loved it, so it's great. Right, it's probably the best. As far as, as far as, like, with the, with the, with the, with the, no, 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 I, sorry, you were just, sorry, I'll come right back there. Okay, okay. Tony, you've shown a commitment to diversity in your tag team and women's divisions. With the end of this match and Jericho being crowned champion, when are we going to see more wrestlers of color in the men's tag uh, I think you are going to see some wrestlers of color in the men's title division. It is something that is absolutely really important to me, and we have uh, some wrestlers that are absolutely going to contend. Uh, and, you know, uh, I don't want to uh, tip, tip my hand on that necessarily, who's going to be in, like, contention. But I think you will see, I promise you by the end of uh, the year, that you will see that, um, you know, I am committed to diversity and doing some exciting things to establish some new stars, both in the singles and tag division, uh, and getting some diversity into those roles. And you'll see, and I'm going to do it. Uh, in a way that you won't remember that we had this conversation because it'll be really good and it, it, I'm not forcing it because I'm not doing it because I'm trying to be more diverse I'm doing it because like there are people on this roster that do deserve the push and we've identified them and now is the time to push those people But I don't want to tell you who and when aware because why would you want that? Fair enough. Great. Following up on that too. There's two women's matches out of the whole card tonight Is there a dedicated plan that you're trying to stick to or would hope to stick to of how much percentage of each show on the weekly show is dedicated to women's matches and men's matches? Yeah, there is. And, uh, you know, I mean, percentage, I think, like, uh, I will say that, like, the shows, we, some of the shows we've done, some of the content, some of it's been very different than what you'll see on TV, but a lot of it's been very representative. Um, I would like to, you know, do at least a, a few women's matches on every show when, when possible. Uh, there are a lot of wrestlers on the roster right now, both on men's and women's, that I want to try and use more. So uh, it, is, it is another effort. And, you know, I am open to more content other than just the two-hour show and these pay-per-views. But the big thing right now is the focus on quality shows like, you know, Double or Nothing All Out. And now Full Gear, I'm really excited about. I think you guys know about Full Gear now, right? Yep. Okay, great. Well, I really hope you come. I promise it's going to be a really good show. We've done really good for our, our pay-per-views. I think the standard of Double or Nothing and All I think, you know, Fight for the Fallen and Fighter were really, really good shows. I really enjoyed them. But I thought Double or Nothing and All Out, we, we tried to kick it up to a standard to give people their money's worth. And I really hope all you guys can make it to Baltimore November 9th. It, uh, it'll be a, I promise it'll be a really, really good pay-per-view. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do for weekly TV. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's several, like I was saying before, there are a lot of the women's wrestlers that we would need to feature more, and it's something I really do want to emphasize. I, I personally spent a lot of time in the women's battle royale because I wanted to establish a lot of characters, and I also wanted to establish that certain people in the division are really, really, really important wrestlers, and that's why we wanted to, like, give that a good presentation. I thought the women's battle royale was excellent, like I said. I thought the Joshi match was also excellent. I'm, I look forward to seeing a lot of those people again. So no hard number, like percentage of, like, 50% men's? No, no, show, not one show we've done has been, like, like we sure. have to get this many men and ask me it's pretty merit based and I really believe in the people we put on every show and it's look like I'm not saying the people that haven't been on the shows don't deserve but I'm saying like everybody who's been on a show I really believe they deserve the spot except for maybe the Nakazawa Javeli match uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you have um, short and long term viewership goals for AEW on TNT that you're able to share yeah I can't I'm sorry I can't really uh, share and also I really uh, need to spend a lot of time now that we've gotten through all out because there's been a big push to get through this You'll be hearing a lot more about that show, the name of that show, the uh, more details about not just week one, but some of the other weeks too. Because we're gonna—I mean, every week's gonna be a big show. They've asked me. The network literally asked me. The guy, one of the uh, one of the top executives, and I have to get back to him on this. This is this issue. He was like, uh, w you know, what are the important big weeks that I should be there? And I was like. They're they're all important. I'll give you some, you know, so I'll tell you, tell, you tell you a lot of important things that are going to happen, just like I'm telling the fans we've made these announcements and sent them a calendar we are, but they're all big and they're all these shows are going to be huge. So, uh, no, I mean, uh, with AEW and TNT, you know, I, I think it's going to be awesome, but to be honest, a lot, we need to do a lot more work getting ready for that show now that we've put this one behind us as a, as a company. And I think uh, everybody's looking forward to like resting up tonight, regrouping next week. I'm looking forward. Uh, the Fulham's on international break. The Jags open the season next week. Uh, I've already done a lot of work for uh, things I'm going to be uh, doing there uh, to get ahead because AEW, the schedule wasn't as heavy uh, as it might be in the future. And I've been able to do a really uh, a ton of work at the Jags and Fulham to take advantage of the fact that we weren't running weekly and, and to plan ahead. And uh, I'm going to stay ahead in, in there. And I do think with you know, AEW and TNT, what I would say uh, about it is like viewership goals. Uh, I expect, you know, if, if we're in a competitive situation, I expect to be very, very competitive. I'm a very competitive person. I play, you know, in sports and everything we do. And I think yeah, this, there's an entertainment aspect. Like I've always said, I wanted people to take this seriously like a sport. And we are a team. You know, we're not 
we're not united, we are divided. Everyone here is fighting, but one thing we're united on is doing a show that like sends our fans home happy, and I think we always consistently I, been doing it. I meant numbers. Yeah, yeah I can't really give you a number. I can't give you a number, and that's why I was saying like I will have numbers. I just haven't been able to get them yet. I'm sorry, I can't be specific. No, that's fair. Do you see yourself getting inside the ring? No, hell, hell no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Adrian. Is Adrian still here? He's gone. Okay, hell no. <laughs> no. Oh, you should have heard what you said to Jimmy Havoc the other day. <laughs> AJ, I mean. Oh, Jimmy. really? Oh, man. <laughs> so, Tony, Jimmy's heard it all. Tony, what is it like um, using animals for entertainment purposes on the show? Because Pharaoh obviously didn't want to be on stage tonight, especially when the pyro went off, and that's really embarrassing for the live crowd, in my opinion. I'm not. And later, I'm not. I don't disagree. Later on having a horse as well, it was like... The Saturday Night's Main event in 1990 when Jesse and Vince were sitting on that. Uh, I will not, I'm a horse, I, I, look, I'm a, I, that, no, that did not cross anybody's mind. The Hangman on a Horse is something people I think have wanted to sure, see for a long time. Sure, backstage. Uh, I thought Hangman on a Horse for the live crowd was great. There was a, the horse uh, was totally good. Now I will, like when I will, point, well, hang on a second. No, okay, I will sorry. concede to you. It's okay. It's okay. What I will concede to you is uh, on Pharaoh. Look, I was here last year, and I was nervous for Pharaoh last year, and I was really nervous for Pharaoh this year. And uh, Pharaoh's fine, and uh, I'm glad Pharaoh's fine. But no, I would not ever do that again. And uh, Brandy was not thrilled uh, with with Cody, and uh, I was not my idea. And uh, and uh, no, with Pyro, I would not have put Pharaoh in that situation again. I'm not saying, but I do really like having Pharaoh at the shows, and he's a great dog. But uh, no, I don't. I think. Uh, if you have trained, uh, you know, performing animals with handlers, and you do everything in accordance with, uh, uh, you know, the standards, and bring in, you know, accredited, licensed people, then I think it's a common thing in show business uh, to do. So, no, I, I, I uh, it just depends on the situation. But shooting the pyro off, no, with a with Pharaoh out there was uh, not something I would have done, and I was not happy about it. And uh, no, I don't think Pharaoh was happy about it either. To your point, so I, that I will concede you. But no, I thought that horse was awesome. Uh, uh, Tony. Uh, so, so and we had the horse, by the way, when the pyro went off, we made sure the horse was well corralled and out of the building before the pyro went off, to your point. So, and especially after what had happened before. We were already going to do that, but I doubled down on it. So, okay, so you're doing, in a, in a two-hour weekly show, and you've got this roster here. Now, are you going to be doing matches, like, before or after the two hours? Yeah. Like, And are you going to be, and also, how much, if any, are you going to be featuring talent from, let's say, AAA, you know, guys... Bring guys in weekly, or you know, just I no do specific expect form. I, we still have a good relationship with them, and I think they they would still send uh, wrestlers up. I expect to wrestle for us, and I think we'll still our guys will still go down and do their big pay per views like they've been doing, and it's been helping them. And their guys have come up and helped us, and been great for us. So I do think that I expect that to continue. Yeah, uh, and uh, I do expect to do your previous question. I do expect to tape matches before and after for the fans live in the audience, and then also hopefully things that people will want to see. Uh, in addition to the two hour content. So it's a great opportunity with a live audience. You know, we can do more than two hours, not necessarily two hours, more than two hours live. I think two hours live for Wednesday night's a good amount, but we could tape some things. And certainly for the live audience, I think they could, they might probably want more than two hours. But I mean, like, like, is there ideas of like maybe taping stuff for BR or taping stuff for YouTube yeah. or whatever? Yeah, like yeah, maybe I, match I, again, things, ideas question, like that. I don't want to like give a bad like spinning on answer like I gave to the numbers question. So uh, <laughs> I don't have the numbers and I don't know where it's going to air, but I think we'll probably will tape more content. I think people are going to be really excited when they see because we have talked about some really exciting ways. And we have some awesome people that might not be on the two hour show every week that you still want to see wrestle every week. So I think we have more rest, more great wrestling in us, and I know. Uh, that I don't want to go longer than two hours out of the gate here, and I think two hours is great for the live show, and then I think for the live crowd, we can tape some more great stuff that people are going to want to watch. Yeah, what, 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 about. what about an idea of, say, like, uh, like here there's a semi-post-game show, but let's say the two hours are up and maybe go, you know, an idea, something like uh, go to, whether it's BR or YouTube, and do like a 20-minute recap with promos or things like that. Has that been considered? You know, no, for sure. That is something that's been talked about a lot, and I think that's something that you might see. And then I also, you know, you might see more content from us, not necessarily live on Wednesday night that was taped that night on Wednesday night, but it's going to be really good wrestling that I think people are going to hear and probably, I, I believe in word of mouth, either on a movie or a wrestling match or whatever. And so I'd really like to do, I believe in also live wrestling i think it like is more exciting and i believe big shows should be live and i think people like i've said a hundred times to all you guys now that i think like people have been missing live high production you know uh quality values uh weekly wrestling every week from like good nice 
arenas and like awesome matches. It's just not something, especially with the, the caliber of the wrestlers that are out there now and the, just these, these great matches and also uh, with the caliber of the technology and the HD. I just think it's going to be really awesome for people to have. But yeah, I mean, uh, where it's going to end up, I don't know yet, but I do think it's like going to be really good for people that we do it. I just don't want to do more than a two hour show because I think more than two hours, I think two hours is the perfect amount for a live wrestling show. There's been a lot of talk. Sorry, sorry, you guys came at the same time. Hey, well, you want to start here? Okay, we don't come back. Uh, there's been a lot of talk over years of an uh, off season for wrestlers, uh, especially for the health of those wrestlers. Is there any kind of talk within that within all of these? There's nobody more health conscious, I believe, as far as a, a you know wrestling promoter, a CEO, president of a wrestling organization than I am, and uh, you know also being very hands on with the creative process and who's booked for TV every week, and who's going to be booked as we go into weekly TV. You're not going to see the same people on TV every week. There is no off season. There is no off season in wrestling. You know I, I expect we'll probably take Christmas off this year. I don't expect. I think TNT does the Christmas story marathon so I think Wednesday's Christmas this year so you're not, you're not gonna see I don't think a TV from us that week but I do think like there will be wrestling from us almost every week on Wednesday on TNT it's gonna be live as much as I can possibly do it and uh, I want people to have that and I want you know and uh, it doesn't have to be the same wrestlers every week and it's not gonna be the same wrestlers every week which is why we're advertising different stuff for the different weeks you know we're advertising Sammy Guevara who didn't even wrestle tonight uh, in the first match against Cody so he's gonna be fresh uh, and you know and then uh, for example, and then, you know, uh, mystery partners we've advertised, uh, you know, I think we've brought in now, uh, Pac, who hasn't uh, wrestled for us yet, has been wrestling other places, but he's coming fresh for us. So you'll see different people every week. So no, there is no off season. I want people to know that like, this is something that's going to be there for them every week, except maybe Christmas. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think we can, you know, with scheduling and booking, uh, you know, but just by being organized, I think we can really take care of our wrestlers and manage our dates, which is what we've been doing. And I don't think any big wrestling promotion has ever probably put more resources in with asking our guys to work less dates than I have, to be fair. Uh, can I just quickly ask you about the broadcasting? You made the two additions of Golden Boy and Tony Schiavone, and I, they're great additions to the team. How is that going to work on Wednesday nights in terms of will there be some that come and do some matches? Is there going to be some who do all the matches? Have you guys figured that out yet? It's not exactly clear. Tony's just joined us, and, and Alex is new, is new to us too. Alex is definitely going to be doing full gear. Tony won't be. Tony will be at the Georgia football game that day, but Tony's going to be a big part of the, the Wednesdays. And I expect Tony to be with us on Wednesdays. And you know, Golden Boy will be at full gear. Calling it'll be the same commentary team it was tonight or on pay per view. And then on TV, I think there's been a huge demand for fans that want to hear uh, Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone call wrestling together again. And, and Excalibur also brings a lot of knowledge and a really intelligent insight into what's going on in the matches. And I think he'll. Uh, be a really good addition to those two guys as well. So I expect, uh, you know, we'll, we'll mix it up for pay-per-view and TV. And then uh, also Tony can keep contributing in the studio as a producer and the control centers uh, or something. We've, I've had a lot of fun uh, doing with them too. Somebody else you guys uh, made a big announcement about was Dustin Rhodes again, uh, multi-year deal and everything. How does it feel to know that uh, you got somebody like him locked up for a good amount of time? Not necessarily locked up because he's in all this other stuff, but uh, how does it feel to have him as a part of the team, like a coach in a way, and also... You know, as a wrestler. I really love Dustin. He's a great person, and I'm so happy that he's with us. He, like, did so much for the company, and, like, uh, you know, I'd said, we'd said kind of uh, that we expected this was going to work out, and, you know, his people and us, we kind of took us a little bit of time, and we got it done, and then we, as soon as we did, we got it announced. But it's been kind of uh, informally kind of the expectation for a while as Dustin would come in uh, as a coach, and he's done great for us as a wrestler, and also he's given people a lot of advice, so it's nothing new, mentoring people and being that, uh, you know, that guiding hand to people then he's trying to develop the a lot of things i mean like dustin's had about as many great matches over the years as anybody when we're having a career that spanned you know several decades of great matches and i think he's got a lot of insight to bring but he's also done great promos been very different characters and uh i just think he, he'll be a really valuable addition so i'm really excited about that and i was uh, glad we could announce that before the pay-per-view too just to give people another reason to be excited about AEW. Tony, we saw LAX show up tonight. Uh, are they going to be able to use their old names and LAX as a team? We, uh, Santana and Ortiz uh, debuted. Uh, they, they came in. Santana and Ortiz are the guys that came out. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a year to lay the foundation of this show. What's your pitch to someone flipping through the channels? What's the difference between AEW and NXT on Wednesday nights? I believe there are a lot more wrestling fans that are not watching wrestling in the last few years than there are wrestling fans that have been actively watching wrestling. And I really hope that I can you know that we all of us can collectively convince not just me and not just the people in my company but the fans can kind of spread the virus and get more people uh, to embrace watching 
wrestling again every week because it was certainly a habit for a lot more people when I was growing up. And honestly, it wasn't that way uh, a few years before that. Like when I was uh, starting high school and I was coming in through like junior high, high school, wrestling was in kind of a down period and we probably weren't uh, at the height of it. And I was obsessed with wrestling and I probably wasn't that cool and not that many people wanted to talk to me about it. And then a couple years later when wrestling was like the biggest thing in the world, everybody wanted to talk to me about it. And I would get try to spread that virus. I would always try to get people to come over, talk to them about it. And I was the kid people wanted to talk to about wrestling because people knew I knew a lot about wrestling. So I guess what I would say about it is like, uh, that what I, would, what I would ask is like anybody who would flip through the channels and like uh, would be willing to watch a wrestling show, give ours a chance. Because if you've ever enjoyed a wrestling show, we try to give people different things that they want to see. And for me, uh, like I, I just really believe that uh, like we've got an audience uh, of people right now that are super committed to what we're doing. But I think when we get a, a platform like this to show a broader audience, like the quality of wrestling we're delivering and our commitment to the wrestling product that I don't think has been seen on national television, as far as like the bell to bell aspect of it, as far as like uh, taking the matches seriously, taking every, you know, and your the points about referees and you know, uh, giving everybody an outlet to like perform and, and show their personality. Yeah. With, uh, with production, production tickets being released today, do you have uh, an attendance and gate number for tonight? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't have the exact number. Raf, I don't know if Raf's got it. Or, uh, hey, what do you got? Oh, that's with the gate. I don't know if you're as going to comment on the. But we had, but it was pretty good. I know it was very good. It was a very good number. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Uh, it was very good. Thank you, Raf. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, what else can I can I do? I, I want to make sure I get everybody. Is Tennille so. sticking around for the women's division, or was she a one-off? The show tonight? Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, okay. But uh, we're not sure. I'm not sure about that. But I was glad she was able to do the battle royale. Tony, you mentioned that you wouldn't want to interfere with any of your NFL footprint. What steps can you make to make sure during an NFL game, particularly Jaguars games, uh, some competition aren't used as advertisements with your product? Well, how do you mean? Uh, let's say there's a Jaguars game on Fox and they want to advertise for someone else. Oh, I mean, that's, uh, that's, I can't have anything to do with that. I mean, Fox pays a lot of money to broadcast those games and they can advertise whatever they want. And I expect they probably will advertise programs that are on Fox, so I don't have any problem with that. That's the, that's the game we're in. So, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about uh, the NFL's partnership with Fox. So, no, it's awesome, and I love uh, being in the NFL, and I do think uh, that is, like I said, you know, I, I prioritize balancing my time, and uh, I do think uh, that's something we're going to run into. I have no problem with that. Can you walk us through the Moxie situation? When he got hurt, was Pac always always in play? This whole process it happened really quick that you got a replacement. Uh, it did. It was very fortunate. Uh, you know, we, we were already uh, deep in negotiations uh, with with Pac about coming in. We'd already been working on something for him to come in, and uh, the situation became right for him to come in. And I expected he was probably going to be here. I was hoping he'd be here tonight anyway. And then you know, it worked out that he was able to work the match for us, and it was a it was a, it was a true you know it was a. I don't want to use the expression lifesaver because honestly it was a pretty scary situation with John. So I don't want to get into his personal medical situation. I think he's the one who wanted to break the news to everybody and he did and he wanted to be here more than anybody and uh, you know nobody's tougher than John and uh, it was a really scary deal and I'm just glad he's okay and I'm glad we were able to give people a really quality match that people are excited about and I you know I do think when John's healthy like he, he still does want to have a great match with Kenny and I think they will have a great match. One more. Yeah. One more question. When it comes to uh, John and Kenny, I mean, are, is, is the, are you kind of gearing that for television or for pay-per-view? Uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to make any big announcements yet, but I do think uh, it was a huge match. Everybody was really excited about for this show, and I do want to make sure, like, the, you know, when John is healthy, I don't want to give put a timetable on it right now because John could, can't be here right now. And when John's healthy, I do want to give people the match. And so I, I can't uh, tell people when they'll see it, but I do expect uh, as soon as John's ready to go, we'll make an announcement. Thanks, Dave. And uh, I mean, is that, if anybody else is, I don't, I, I, if anybody else has one really big question. I got I one. What do you got, Mike? What was the uh, decision process like to bring the next pay-per-view to Baltimore? Uh, the decision process to bring the next pay-per-view to Baltimore is it's a really good date. Uh, it's a really good date for a wrestling show. It's uh, the time it made sense, and it was an arena and a market that it was just calling us. Uh, it's a, a Baltimore's a great town for AEW. Baltimore's a great town for wrestling. It's a great building for wrestling. It's the right time to do that pay-per-view. It's the right time for us. We'll have had six weeks of great television shows. We know Chris Jericho is AEW champion now. You know, uh, if he's still the AEW champion, then whoever the AEW champion is, I expect they'll be defending the title. I expect it's going to be a really, really good card. And I, you know, I, I, uh, having the inside track of knowing some things that'll probably, ha you know, uh, gonna, that we're going to do, I think it's going to be a really awesome show. And the thought process on Baltimore is like uh, to get a building like that. 
uh, when you have a chance, jump on it. It's a, you know, Royal Farms is a, is a great building to watch a wrestling show in Baltimore. It's one of the best wrestling towns. Thank you. That's a great question to go out on. I'm excited. I hope a lot of you are at Baltimore, and uh, I'm going to try and make sure, do everything in my power to make sure it is of the standard of the shows you guys have come to expect from AEW. And thank you all for everything you've done to kind of tell people about what we're doing because uh, without you guys spreading uh, the word about a lot of our wrestlers before they were on this great platform with TNT and ITV and all the awesome things we're doing, you guys were the ones uh, that kept uh, uh, kept the, this flame going. And uh, thank you all. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.